What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to my new home. Okay, so it's not really my home, but let's pretend for a second that it's your home and you just moved here. And being the tech savvy individual that you are, your first priority is to make sure that the internet is working. So you call your local cable provider and they send a guy out with a router and a modem to set up your internet. So 20 minutes later, your internet is finally set up. However, this happens. What an absolute mess this is. It's just absolutely horrible. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you cable management and how to fix this mess properly. Now understand before I start this video that I do have my own quarrels with the cable company. That said, I don't like the fact that cable providers will send a guy out who will install your internet and then just shove a bunch of wires in there like it's no big deal. If you ever decide to open this panel or if somebody has to go through it again, everything's gonna fall out and it's completely disorganized. Forget trying to troubleshoot if you have any issues with your internet connection. You don't even know what wire goes to what. So this is why we're doing it. We're gonna have this nice, neat, and organized. It's gonna look fantastic, and it's gonna make our lives much easier. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take everything apart. Uh, we need to get everything apart so that uh, it frees up as much space as possible so that we can begin laying out where our components are gonna be. All right, so we got everything out. We've got a Sage MCOM. This is a Fast 5260. I've never heard of this company before. Gosh, what brands are they providing us? This is a Technicolor. Gosh, I thought Technicolor was developed in the 60s. This is a Technicolor DPC 3216. It's a modem, it's a Doxis 3.0. Again, it works and it supports a uh, telephone. This up here, this is a telephone input module, TM1045. We're gonna go ahead and move this to the top. I really don't know what this was for. This was for something at one point. There you go. When in doubt, rip it out. Okay, so we're gonna move this to the top of here. So we moved it up here to the top. So that should clear out a lot of space. So we're gonna take this, this is our telephone, down underneath. We have this jumbled mess. We don't need these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these back up here. Two are leading to this splitter. And the splitter is gonna divide both cable TV and internet. So I'm gonna wire this underneath the telephone. So I've often heard the expression that you need the right tool to complete the job. In this case, the right tool is whatever you got. Um, so I could use a crescent wrench or I could use channel locks. I could use pliers. I have vice grips. So we're using vice grips. So I'm gonna run these underneath. And then, of course, connect them right back. What I can do is wires back up first. So now, now those wires are out of the way. We could just mount this down here, but I would rather have it up here. Go ahead and take this one off. this up and around. I think maybe right there would be a good spot for it. So we're going to be using a combination of twist ties, or I should say zip ties, and these one inch adhesive mounting pads. If I do find out where you can buy these, there should be a link in the video description below. So I'm going to take my first twist tie, twist tie, zip tie. So I'm going to be using a flathead precision screwdriver to pull the zip tie through. Go. Now this here, zip 
tie through like this. There you go. Now it is secure, it's not going anywhere. And we'll finish off by cutting the tail. Make sure you count your fingers when you're done. You should have three of them. All right, so we've got the cable managed so far. Let's focus on the components. So next, I think we're gonna have the modem. It's already got these slots, as you can see here, for mounting onto the wall. Uh, we're gonna just uh, use the adhesive pads with zip ties. So I'm thinking maybe right here would be good. What is kind of annoying about this is that it's got this little, uh, this little fat end. You can actually see it really well right here. It's got this fat end right here that makes it really annoying to mount to the wall because it like it wasn't meant to mount to a wall, it was meant to stand upright on a desk. Yeah, I think right here, right there should be good. Okay, so we got our adhesive pad. Just just what? That's right, just peel it off. Man, it's amazing how that peel it off. It's good for everything, right? I think we'll do another one just below it. Put one maybe right here. Nice. Okay. Now pay attention because this is gonna get tricky. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take two zip ties and we're gonna connect them together like this. So now we've got one big zip tie instead of just two small ones. The benefit to these pads is that there's a slot that you can slide right through and that's gonna hold it on. There we go. Make sure you hear that zip sound, that way you know it's working. I'm gonna run through the bottom holes here. Get the modem here. And there we go. Now, if we wanted to, we could do another zip tie around the sides. However, I don't think we'll necessarily have to do that. Hey, look, it's my silhouette. Look at me, I'm a modem. All right, no more silliness. So I'm gonna bend this cable down, connect in here like this. Now, the best way that we could actually do this is if we made our own cables. Unfortunately, I don't have the tools to make my own cables and most people don't own the tools. You could buy the tool. I might even put the tool in the video description below if you're interested in buying one. But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna work with the cables that I have. Now, the benefit of mounting it like this is that I can still see the activity lights on the sides. We can go ahead and plug in our telephone line, but I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up first. Take another handy zip tie, go ahead and zip tie that. You could also use twist ties, which are a lot less permanent. You don't have to cut them, but because I have plenty of zip ties here. Ooh, that sound is so satisfying. Oh. There we go. All right, rock and roll. So is this what R. Kelly meant by being trapped in the closet? Maybe he was working on his home network. There's a reason I'm in this closet. All right, so the last bit that we have is the router. Now this is gonna be the most challenging one because all of the ports are on the back. However, all the activity lights are on the front. You know, I gotta say probably the easiest way to do this is gonna be to mount it upside down. I know it's kind of weird, but It'll give us greater access to the ports by moving the ports to the top, but it will also allow us to see the activity lights on the front. I'm gonna say probably right about there. Yeah, I'd say that looks that looks pretty good. Say right about there. So we'll do one right here. These are actually pretty strong adhesive pads, but I like using two just in case. It keeps it a little bit more secure in my opinion. Or zip ties? I don't know why people do that. Ugh, it doesn't even taste good. Okay, so we're gonna start here. This one's gonna come through the same way. There you go. Big open arms, ready for a hug. Actually, maybe, I think I wanna do two more. Do one pad right about here, right about here. So same thing, I'm just gonna wire it up. That. Now we've got two sets of arms. That's just the base, so we don't need to worry about that. We'll just 
do the first click for now. Oh, this one won't even reach. Looks like we're gonna have to add a third zip tie. There you go, we got our third. So that should be long enough to reach. We're gonna hold it there for now because we need to connect our cables. Okay, you gotta look at my cables here. So this says master of puppets. The reason why we're limited by the number of wires that we can plug in is because there is only four ethernet ports on the back of this router. Now some routers have more than four, but often the standard is just four. We can combat this by plugging a switch into the router. I'm not gonna install a switch because we don't need one at this time. So what I decided to do is because the people staying in the master bedroom don't require the use of internet, I'm gonna leave theirs disconnected and that will allow me to plug all four of these into the back of the router. So there's two ways that we can handle it. We've got these extra cords that we don't need. Now I can either leave them at the bottom of the box or I can push them back into the top. So we can kind of turn this router sideways and you can see all the ports here. The WAN is gonna come from the modem and then these four ethernet ports are gonna distribute out to the house via these blue cables. Go ahead and plug that in. We're gonna go ahead and route our cable from the modem to the router. I know you guys probably can't see it, but there's these little slots on the side that we're gonna use that to cable manage. So for the time being, I'm just gonna loop this ethernet cable right where it is. In the final piece of the router, I'm gonna go ahead and secure these cables, make sure it's on there good. All right, so we are in the final stretch of this video and the most important part is powering all of these devices. So we have got these switch mode power supplies. Um, there is an outlet, but here's the problem. You go to plug it in, right, and it plugs in, no problem. However, when you go to try and close the door, you see how it sticks right here? It won't close because it's sticking out past the edge right down here. So this simply will not do. We could find a way to include uh, short adapters, but I found a much better solution, power strip. We're gonna put this power strip inside and this will accomplish two things. One, it'll provide power to both the modem and the router. And two, if we decide to include an external storage that requires an external power supply, such as a uh, hard drive, for example, or some other unit, we could still power it from this power supply. Plug it in down here. All right, so we got a blue light, that's good. And now we need to figure out where we're gonna mount it. And I'm thinking probably right here would be a good place to mount. So we're gonna get more of these adhesive backed pads. Peel that off. We're gonna peel it off. Put one right there, right about there. We're gonna go ahead and put some zip ties there to mount it. Get rid of this twist tie mess here. We're gonna put the adhesive back pad Right there. All right, so that one is secure. Go ahead and get the other one plugged in. Bundle it up like this. Put it down here, place that I can secure it right here. All right, nice and secured. The last part is just making sure that we secure this cable somehow. And what I'm gonna do is run this back behind, plug it in here. We're gonna bundle this under, like so. And yeah, we are good to go. We've got everything in. The last part is just to make sure that the door closes. Case closed. <laughs> Now looking at the final product, I have to say it looks fantastic. Could I have done a better job? Absolutely. I could have individually sleeved each wire. I could have made sure that the wire traces were 
perfectly straight, but I didn't really need to do that. I just needed to make sure that you could follow everything and everything was in a neat, organized fashion. And I think I accomplished that. I hope this guide was helpful and informative. And if it was, leave me comments in the comment section below. If there are problems or issues that you had with the guide, also let me know. Well, now that the internet's back, I can do what I do best, streaming. Hey, by the way, did you know that I stream every Wednesday and Friday? That's right, Wednesdays are known as Wii U Wednesdays, where I stream on the Wii U console, and Fridays are Friday Night Live, where I stream console and PC titles. I stream on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, and Fridays I stream at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. So make sure you catch me streaming live. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya.